again. It's the quilt doctor. And this time we're in the McLean textile gallery. It's our second uh, exhibition. We're very, very excited. We are already booked for the whole year, month per month. And uh, we have beautiful, uh, wonderful things here today in the, uh, the future. And we had one loose ends last, uh, last grouping and uh, you've already seen that. So, uh, The Quilt Doctor, I'm on the web, not the web, uh, YouTube as The Quilt Doctor is in. So if you wanna see us, then that's the place to go. Clara Sue, my buddy in crime or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we're chums, so. She's uh, our backup with all our notes, and uh, we'll, with that, um, we'll have both of the artists come in. And uh, this is Eileen Dowdy. Have you got her in the. And Cindy Gristella. 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 <laughs> and they're going to take us around the room and uh, talk about their uh, exhibition. So um, we're going to start, I think, with Cindy here. Cindy, it's gorgeous. Can you tell us something about your first exhibit here? It's colors. How did you pull it all together? Well, thank you so much, Nancy. I appreciate it. So this quilt is called New Beginnings, uh -huh. and there's a reason for that. Um, I started out with this, and my work is very uh, improvisational, uh -huh. very abstract. I started out as a traditional quilter many, many years ago, um, and was a traditional quilter, enjoyed making traditional patterns, uh -huh. um, but I got a little tired of following other people's patterns. And I so see. I um, have, over the past few years, 10, 15 years, have evolved into a more contemporary style. So this is clearly based on the traditional log cabin. Oh. Uh, I made this uh, this block very improvisationally out of, um, uh, quite frankly, there were leftovers from another project. I and um, I loved this 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 um, bit here, but I had trouble trying to figure out how to put it all together into a composition because with improvisational design, you don't have a pattern to follow. Right. So I get to decide what it looks like. Right. It stayed up on my design wall for months and months. Oh. Well, I tried to figure out, I tried a whole bunch of different backgrounds and different uh -huh. ideas. Uh -huh. um, and then I came uh, to this um, sort of um, uh, flat grain uh -huh. so that the bright of the of the block would, um, would, draw, would your, draw your eye it in. It really does in the varying textures of the Quilting, just yeah. So each each um, section of the um, of the quilt has a different um, stitching motif uh -huh. to create a lot of dimension and texture in all this mega space. It does. It truly does. There, um, we've had it for a little while now, and uh, you it's gone around to, to lots of different places. Exhibited. It's been exhibited before. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh, I yes. See. It's it's acceptable. Thank you. Good. Let's move on down here. Clara Sue, do yes, you? Yes, ma'am. I'm right do here. <laughs> do you have anything to say to this one? Uh, what's an abstract? This is Vermont Mountains. Yes, it's called Mountain yeah. Sunrise. Oh, Mountain I see. Sunrise. And um, and the. Cindy has hand dyed the fabrics for this particular quilt. Only the ones in the top. In the, the top. The sky fabrics are some sky that fabrics. I dyed myself. I'm uh -huh. typically not a, a dyer, uh -huh. <laughs> um, but I did I did do a little bit of that. Um, the rest of these are um, they are hand dyed fabrics uh, from a company called Cherrywood Fabrics, oh, oh. Um, which does a really beautiful job of um, this triple dyed sort of suede. Um, uh, idea, which is really, which is really lovely. So you get the colors on a bolt, or you 
blended all the colors together. I blended them together. I cut them and yeah. sewed them back together. Uh -huh. Um, the obviously this um, you know striped section yes. was intended to represent the mountains. Um, I, a friend of ours gave me a photograph of um, their mountain view in Vermont, uh -huh. and um, and I you know created this abstract landscape doing the design in um, in three sections. Uh -huh. uh, this section is you know obviously not in line with the others in order to create sort of a dimension so that you're looking. Into, into the mountain landscape. And then um, each of these uh, areas of green and, and um, sort of that uh, brownish tan are the, the, the meadow in front. Uh -huh. And um, each one also has a different uh, stitching motif stitched into it. This is an homage to Matisse, number two. And um, this brightness in here attracts your attention more to the center of the piece and it has uh, all straight line vertical stitching and maybe you'd want to give us some background on sure um, so this is um, the next this one and the next uh, the one coming up next are, are more recent pieces mm -hmm. um, so this is one that I just finished um, in the last year um, and I am starting to experiment with uh, the idea of these large freehand cut curves and other sorts of shapes um, and focusing primarily on the, the, the color line and shape of the design. Um, I have an art history major from uh, the College of William and Mary back in the day. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so I'm very interested in sort of the the, the design, the, the principles of design that I use in fabric, um, the same way that I studied them when I was, you know, when I was back in the day when I was when I was uh, um, in college. And so, um, I was fortunate as a child that my parents encouraged my love of art. Um, I had the opportunity to experiment with painting and drawing and ceramics and oh, embroidery yes. and all kinds of different things. Um, there weren't any quilters in my family, <laughs> so I don't come from a quilting tradition. I didn't learn anything about quilts until I was a young adult. Wow. Um, and so um, quilting, once I discovered it, was just spoke to me in a way that other art forms had not. Oh, and see. so the opportunity to, you know, to create a, um, a, an interesting artistic composition and then add in um, texture with those stitching lines uh -huh. that you can't do in any other medium. Isn't and that's why it, this is so exciting to me. And um, that, I have to tell you that pink piece is like it glows in the dark. I mean, it is so beautiful. It, um, it, it almost looks like a sliver of the moon or something, but um, it, it especially compared with the complementary uh, green uh, here, uh -huh. it really it it, that draws your eye in. It, it really pops, does, it and does. it was that was deliberate. It's it's magnificent. Go ahead. This is your so this is my most recent piece. Oh, okay. I I finished it um, the day before we um, hung the show. Oh my gosh. And um, so this is is again. I am expl experimenting, exploring with these, you know, these these freehand cut curves uh -huh. that are very, um, you know, sort of very organic, and uh -huh. um, and so you know you have this whole area that comes down and then goes back up in the green, uh -huh. um, and it's um, this uh, set of motifs is just really sort of exciting to me. Here's another section here that sort of creates this wonderful shape. Um, and, uh, you know, so I have moved towards, um, you know, just really abstract line and shape in these more mm -hmm. recent pieces. Um, and I feel that the texture is um, still important, but it's more secondary. So I use these irregularly shaped, irregularly spaced um, lines to, um, it's, it's amazing how the stitching, the texture that I add to the piece really pulls everything together. Oh, I see. You know, so that once it looks, you know, 
one way when it's when when you just have the top but when you add that stitching it just really even if it's not as elaborate as some of the other stitching it really just pulls everything together and emphasizes those shapes that I'm creating. And do you work uh, on the design board first of all? And yes. And, and see what uh, works. Yeah. So these um, these are these elements are created um, in block format, uh -huh. just like a traditional quilt. Uh -huh. um, so each of these blocks is created separately, uh -huh. and then I have a, a design wall in my studio. And I lay them out on the on the wall, turning them this way and that, uh -huh. auditioning different. You know, this went through several different, um, you know, uh, um, iterations, I guess, mm -hmm. of um, of the design before I um, before I settled on this one. So it's a it's a process uh -huh. of um, you know, it sounds a little bit weird, but sort of you know, talking with. The, uh -huh. the piece and letting uh -huh. it talk back to me uh -huh. and what it what you know what um, what shapes I want to emphasize what you know what what lines I want to to um, to make prominent well your eye never tires of looking at it because there's always something that catches your fan fancy and uh, it's fabulous thank you so this one is called Aztec Autumn, um, and the interesting um, thing about this uh, this quilt is that it was inspired by a picture of a pillow in a magazine. Oh, <laughs> and the pillow had um, these sort of irregular stripes, um, and I just, you know, as an improvisational artist, the most important thing that I ask myself is, what if? What if I put, you know, what if I, you know, use these stripes and add in um, a few um, improv log cabins to break up the stripes? Uh -huh. um, the stripes are different heights. Um, so we have a skinnier one here and a wider one here. Uh -huh. So the visual um, it's not boring excitement that you yes, get yes. is really um, is really a lot of fun. And but it's very intense, you know, there's a lot going on. Uh -huh. So I included these um, sort of organic uh, curved borders on the interior uh -huh. to kind of give the eye a place to rest. Uh -huh. um, but then I wanted to, uh, you know, to, to sort of keep the, the, the interest uh -huh. going on these two sides. I have a very, um, my, my, um, I don't know, I call it my quilting DNA. Oh. Um, I love, uh, you know, scrappy uh, designs. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of scrappy, you know, traditional quilts mm -hmm. when I was doing traditional quilts. I like asymmetry. Mm -hmm. So I have the borders on only two sides as opposed to all four sides. Yes. And yes. it's fascinating to me how I have, you know, all this excitement going on here and and this 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 sort of heaviness on this side, mm -hmm. and it's balanced by this little <laughs> tiny piece over yes, here. Yes. That if this had been, um, you know, just the this corner going around without this, mm -hmm. I don't think it would have been as successful. So those are the little you know sort of design mm -hmm. things that I think about uh -huh. while I'm creating my work. That I don't know, it's exciting to uh, me. It might not be exciting yes, to anybody else, but yes, it's <laughs> it's fanciful <very> <laughs> because. You're looking, you're looking, and it's like a little secret that, oh my gosh, yes, look at that. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing that's kind of fun about this, that, that this sort of happened, was when I create these stripes, um, they're, they are not even. Uh -huh. And when I laid them out, I thought, you know what, how fun would that be if I just, you know, create, kept that curve going on uh -huh. that side uh -huh. instead of, you know, cutting it Square. off. Square, absolutely. So, it gives it motion. Yeah. The, so, uh, so this is a this is a fun one. Yes, yes. I want to buy it. What's the name? Oh. Aztec Autumn. Aztec Autumn. I am the author of a book called Artful Improv, uh -huh. um, and it is uh, a book to help quilters learn how to design improvisationally without using patterns or templates or really any rules. I and see. so the next three quilts, these these here. Are, um, are quilts that use techniques from that book. So I teach 
um, five basic techniques that, um, that, that students can use to put um, elements together to, to, be, to, to be in their own quilts. So this is, um, when I was, again, when I was a traditional quilter, Drunkard's Path was one of my favorite. Oh, um, yes. Um, one of my favorite designs. So this yeah. is a um, sort of an improvisational Drunkard's Path style. Uh -huh. um, and then the, um, the background is activated by these uh, colorful inset stripes. It's almost like so, lightning. Yeah. Coming over them. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and also it's the, um, an example of an analogous color scheme where I'm using uh, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, uh -huh. uh, blue, green, and purple. I see. And then the motion of the clothing. And then, yeah. And then um, this uh, stitching on this one is just in a giant spiral that goes all the way around, sort of, um, you know, mimicking the, the Drunkard's Path spiral. The Drunkard's Path. And the one above is? And the one above is, is um, you know, similarly using uh, the, um, the the improv curves, I call them, uh -huh. in a different orientation. They don't make the drunkard's path circle. Um, uh -huh. They look to me sort of like, you know, marbles that are tumbling. Oh. Um, and then uh, separated by just these, I love these stripes. Um, I think you can never have too many stripes. Isn't that wonderful? And um, so I had fun with uh, sort of a, uh, a different color, color recipe here, um, you know, using mostly um, less saturated autumn mood uh, oh, sort, of, sort of tone. They're both wonderful, wonderful. It's called Painted Desert. Um, when I was a child, my, my parents took all four of us, um, plus the dog, uh, to, on a trip from Florida in a camper uh, to out to California to visit my uncle and then back. And like we'd never been any place like that. And so this is sort of my um, uh, rendition of the painted desert uh, uh, in the Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona. And um, so I used, uh, again, just these uh, sort of abstract curves to, you know, to, to sort of create the, the um, Undulation. The undulations uh -huh. um, and lots of of, um, of of different quilting motifs. I love doing these curves with different quilting motifs. Mm -hmm. um, and this was also um, made um, for the book, and it is an example of again that idea of, of asymmetrical balance. Uh -huh. So this large piece is balanced by this, you know, this uh, sort yes. of smaller line of of um it's really uh sort of a of a of a um a base here mm -hmm. wonderful i mentioned that my my parents took me and my siblings as children uh to visit the national parks out west mm -hmm. my husband and i have continued that tradition and we um have been on a family quest for the last 25 years to take our children to all of the national parks. Wow. And we've been to, there are, they keep adding more, there's now 61, <laughs> and we've all been to about 55 of them. Um, this one was, this quilt is uh, memorializing a trip that we took to Wrangell St. Elias National Park in Alaska, oh. where um, there are, Wrangell St. Elias is, I think um, the size of a relatively small state it, in itself. Mm -hmm. There's only 60 miles of roads there. And so you get around in these float planes. Did you? And we did. Oh. Yes. And, um, and so this is from a photograph that I took um, in the park where we uh, landed on a sandbar <laughs> in, in, the, in the, the magnificent mountains and, um, and this one is a rare use of, um, of patterned batik fabrics in my work yes, um, because I wanted to uh, really, um, you know, give a sense of the, of the, um, the color and, and, and what was going on. I stopped using um, um, patterned fabrics in my work a number of years ago because the stitching doesn't show as well. Uh -huh. um, but I do love them and still have a lot of them. This quilt was in, um, Donna DeSoto's um, National, Park. National Park book that oh, came out a few years ago. That's so um, it was represent, representing uh, Wrangell St. Elias National Park. Wrangell 
Saint Elias. Wrangell Saint Elias. Yep. There are eight um, national parks in Alaska. Um, three of them are above the Arctic Circle. Oh, so those are ones that we haven't made it to yet. Our children are now adults, and uh, oh. so we, you know, hope that we'll be able to get there. But it, even if not, it's been a, it's been an enormous fun. So oh, really, was the airplane really red? It was, was, yes. It was. It was. <laughs> it was, yes. Really? Because it's special. Really. Yeah, so this was kind of an interesting um, idea because I don't do applique. Uh -huh. And so I had to figure out how to do this, um, how to do the applique. Oh, so yeah. the wheels. And, and the wheels. And, and, and I, I um, so I blew up my photograph uh -huh. and simplified it. And then just um, the applique is, is fused on. How cute. How wonderful. So with this one, it's called Through the Window. We come full circle from the w one that we started with, uh -huh. um, New Beginnings. So this is, I've done a, a series of these, um, of these quilts that are basically a, a, an improvisational block set asymmetrically on a background of negative space. Uh -huh. And the negative space in this case is, um, is broken up by uh, stripes. Uh -huh. um, and also I've used uh, several different values of this gold in the negative space. Mm -hmm. And then again, added my, um, my sort of signature uh, free motion quilting, which I do um, freehand without any do marking really? or stitch regulator oh, or gosh. anything like that. So that's really, really yeah. good. No, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it's, it's wonderful. Um, so that's, uh, Cindy's uh, presentation. And, Thank you um, so much. I appreciate the well, opportunity, it's Nancy. Joy, it's really it's fun. It's a joy. I mean, and I have been friends for 30 years. Yes. That's yes. hard to imagine. What, where were those little kids? That, yeah. Where are they? Nancy <laughs> saw my children grow up. So it was really special in my sh tiny shop. And then 30 years later, here we are the, with these beautiful quilts. Tell us about it. So like Cindy, I started out with traditional quilting. And unlike Cindy, I don't have an art degree. I have a cartography degree. I know. So looking back, the landscape had an influence on what I ended up doing. Absolutely. And it was an epiphany for me to realize that quilting as beautiful as traditional piece quilts are, uh -huh. you can do other things with quilting. And I realized you could do landscapes uh -huh. with quilting. So right. it evolved to do the world that I live in. And this is a small example. Um, they say, do what you know. Uh -huh. So this is inspired by the view out my studio window. My <laughs> studio see. is a spare bedroom in my house and I have crows in my neighborhood. I uh -huh. love crows. You'll see with the pieces I brought to your, your wonderful gallery, I am focusing on trees I in know. what I chose to I display see. here. I see. And I love my sewing machine. I love to stitch trees. Uh -huh. So everything you see here is machine stitched. And is the uh, fabric, what did you call the it? The fabric is something I bought from a friend who dyes fabric. Uh -huh. I do, like Cindy, I'm not a dyer, but I will show you some examples of painting on fabric. I see, I see. Well, they're charming, really, really charming. They, they really show that movement of, of the, the crows taking off and flying and we all love to look at them mm -hmm. you know they're so fascinating they birds. are yes they are and the next one is Which inspired is. by the landscape of wisconsin where i grew up Wait I, have you got this i had a challenge to make a scene relating to summer. So uh -huh. I chose to do a northern summer, which is not as hot as our Virginia summers. <laughs> so the sun is not as hot as you might feel. 
but hopefully you have the, the sense looking at this that you're in a very quiet area. Maybe you'll hear crickets chirping. Yes. Maybe yes. a fish jumping in the water. Yes. And again, I love to do trees. These are free cut from a lot of different green fabrics. Uh -huh. And I started from the back, um, had my sky cut out, put the, the background green down. The water is um, painted satin because oh. I wanted to have a little bit of a sheen in there. So I've yes. painted white satin with different types of blue um, the, fabric paint. Are these Queen Anne's lace? And this, yes, it's Queen Anne's <laughs> lace. I'm glad you recognize it. And the, the flowers are, the white is entirely um, thread. Oh. I just, I just love my thread. So I've got a lot of different colors of green threads in the fabric to build up the depth. So you actually have a thread and needle and you are? It's machine. Oh, it's all machine. machine. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I see. Yep. I see. And, but it's layered then on top of mm -hmm. the fabric. Mm -hmm. So it's raw edge applique. Yes. Yeah, it's laid down on the background. There's no turn under edges. No, no. <laughs> I'm in too much of a hurry <laughs> to well, turn while, under my edges. Well, while the emotion is there, you got to get it done, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. that's, that's for sure. My husband was taken with this one. Oh, he really. Did he study it? He did. He did study it. And I said, well, she's done a masterful job, but I'll let you tell. <laughs> This, this one does appeal to a different variety of people, perhaps. Uh -huh. um, it was shown once in a um, supervisor's office, uh -huh. and she said, I have to get the engineers to come look at this. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's called Rhapsody Watershed, and it is my neighborhood. Uh -huh. So what you are seeing is um, outlines of houses uh -huh. Where's your with house? their driveways. I live here, uh -huh. so I'm lucky to have a wonderful park behind, behind me here, yeah. and also a wonderful, wonderful park oh, here, which wow. you'll see referenced in a couple other pieces. Uh -huh. And this is about how precious water is. So water is gold. Water oh. is gold in, in this quilt. There's a pond here. There's a stream that runs through this neighborhood woods and also a little stream um, that's dry most of the time it's intermittent but there's a stream we watch back there also mm. so this is about um, what's called impermeable surfaces impermeable meaning it's hard water does not go through it uh -huh. so when it rains or precipitates water collects on rooftops, mm -hmm. collects on sidewalks and roads, and essentially just goes down the storm drain and it's gone. It does no good to the environment. Uh -huh. So this is calling out by having this essentially empty, those impermeable surfaces, that it's, it's just gone. Uh -huh. And if you would look very closely, I don't know if it will show up on the video, but I have one of my rare times of hand stitching, oh, okay. I have taken a single gold thread and hand stitched it going in a spiral around the roof, down the driveway, and it's joined by the other houses and it goes down the storm drain. Oh. So you would see gold spiraling oh, and running the through the gutters and it's gone. The water is gone. Wow, that makes, makes a certain certainly makes a statement uh, that we can mm -hmm. learn with, uh, learn by. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so I'm hoping people, people, if they're not aware of the problem, yes. they'll think about it. And that's why rain gardens are becoming more popular. Uh -huh. There are ways to use other materials than cement or asphalt in uh -huh. sidewalks and driveways. That's porous, that lets the, the rain the soak through. There's rain barrels, a lot of different things you can do to help mitigate this. 
large commercial buildings do green roofs now. Oh. So that's that's the purpose for green roofs oh, to I capture see. that water. I see. Yeah. Good to know. Does the pond overflow? The pond I have never seen overflow. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, this stream though is in terrible condition. The erosion on the banks is really, really bad. Oh dear. Yeah. And it's fresh water. And people, there are houses <clears throat> continuing up the street up here and they're actually getting concerned about their backyards because this is not flat. This is a very steep hill that I comes see. down I see. here and they're actually worried about losing their backyards maybe in the next couple of can, decades. Can you get them to talk about in group form about re constituting the banks of the <laughs> stream or anything? Well, all water comes from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So the real problem is in this direction. Uh -huh. Not to give you major lecture here uh -huh. on <laughs> erosion, but uh -huh. Like high school parking lots, oh. the commercial areas, and that's why I call this a watershed. It is I Rap see. City watershed. Uh -huh. It's an entire problem. I see. We can all contribute to the solution, but you have to look upstream to see where that flash of water is coming from during a storm. Something, something, something to, to be think aware about. Of. My yeah. gosh, my gosh, in artistic form. Tell us about this beauty, and I see a mate sort of to it. That it has a maybe unusual way to do borders, uh -huh. for one thing. Um, explaining the way this came about, my father-in-law was a very eclectic reader mm -hmm. as a lawyer, and he gave me a book about knowing that I love trees, he gave me a book about the microscopic study of trees. Uh -huh. So it was filled with black and white pictures that were taken through a microscope oh. of cross sections of trees. I love so it. who knew different species have different shapes of tree? The cells have different shapes. Oh my God. Depending on if it's cut straight across or at various angles, uh -huh. there will be different shapes. You pick up the tree rings in different ways, uh -huh. the growth patterns. So I was just fascinated by this. It was a great present that he gave me. Yes. And I ended up doing a series of seven quilts. Uh -huh inspired by different species that I, I looked at the pictures and I thought that is just fascinating. Oh, it is. So it is. you see the, the, those pictures in my quilting. Mm -hmm. Each mm -hmm. one of these circles that are machine quilted in various colors of thread uh -huh. are, the, are the cells. Uh -huh. And I wanted to do the whole of the tree. <clears throat> Excuse me. So starting with the, the how-to of how I put this together, I started with a white piece of fabric, uh -huh. cotton fabric. Uh -huh. I took fabric pastels, which are basically like crayons, uh -huh. and I drew in with the pastels a couple different colors of pastels, the branching pattern of that type of tree. This is a black locust. Uh -huh. With paint, I painted on an indication of the leaves and the, the fruits or nuts of the tree. So that's the greens and golds and kind of brownish colors you see. Perfect. Then I took, so that is this much. Mm -hmm. Then I laid that on a larger piece of batting, mm -hmm. cotton batting did the machine quilting, mm -hmm. and finished it by painting with acrylic paint because oh I wanted it to be stiff, an indication of the bark. My God. The pattern of the bark, which is also individual by tree, what the, what the bark looks like. My and God. I didn't want it to be a rectangle. Uh -huh. I took advantage of that raw edge by having an irregular edge. Wonderful. And the, the edge, is painted also uh -huh. and you can see the quilting uh -huh. on the back so it does have a backing to it but this this part is just batting 
in the background, mm -hmm. and this has the traditional three layers oh, of the see. quilt. I so I had I had a lot of fun with that. I can imagine. I mean, and only you can do as well getting it straight to all your branches <laughs> and trunk and everything. Oh, I won't guarantee it's straight. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty forgiving. It is wonderful. And the brother over there. And I have another one here that is a red alder done in the same technique. So comparing the two, you can see the tree cell patterns uh -huh. are different. You can get some indication of growth rings, uh -huh. the different types of cells that are in the wood. These are both the same magnification. They're, they're 25 times magnification. Oh my God. And they're both cross sections. Yeah. Wow, you still have the book? I still have the book on my shelf. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Maybe someday I'll add a couple more to the series. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the Beast of Resistance is here. My this is God. probably my best known quilt. And this is called Root Domain. And Where this is it been, first of all? I, I will never sell this quilt no. it means so much to me. Where is and it? Like the, the water scene, this is also inspired my, my growing up in Wisconsin. Oh. And also by my knowledge of geography and cartography uh -huh. figure into this. That is uh, cartography is mapping. It's map making. Mapping. So I, I had to take geography classes uh -huh. to know about the world in order to map it. I see, I see. Well, now this was inspired by a call for entry that was going to be outside in a park. Oh. Hung outside. And oh. I thought, I would love to make a quilt that looks like it is part of oh, that yeah. scenery. Oh. Literally part of the park. Gosh. So gosh. that's why it's hung from a branch up there. Yes. And the hanging loops have leaves on uh -huh. them to look like it's a leafy maple branch. Uh -huh. The upper section is above ground. We have mature trees. There's yellow netting for sunbeams. These are called erratics. They, are, they were left there by the glaciers a few tens of thousands of years ago. That's something you would normally only see in the landscape where there have been glaciers. Oh my goodness. And wood violets and ferns. It is rock. They're rocks, uh -huh. yeah. And I crinkled them, crinkled the fabric and then fused them down mm -hmm. to get that texture. So more machine stitching with a beautiful variegated thread. But down below your feet is where all the action happens. <laughs> There are no animals up here. This is almost still. Uh -huh. Down here we have mammals done in thread and insects and various other creatures. little creatures, little... I like the mice. The mice, <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. So this, this is sort of where my love of thread painting started. This, I think, goes all the way back to 2001, this quilt. Oh. So this quilt's been around. Oh, oh. Well. And it was at this point, I really started to realize how much I love to sew with thread, free motion stitching uh -huh. with thread. It was just such a wonderful way to do the fur of the chipmunk, the mice, the badgers, the mole. The insects are painted with acrylic. Yes. And this was also a lesson I happened on accidentally that repetition gives you movement. If you had just one mouse, it would look like it's yes, standing. Yes. But when you get three, it looks like they're running somewhere. And as we get lower and lower down, it gets darker and more mysterious. <laughs> so at the time I was designing this, I was reading one of those strange books that only a cartographer or geographer would read, <laughs> essays about the geography of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. One of them was written by a soil scientist named Francis Hole. Oh my goodness. 
poll, great name yeah. for a soil yeah. scientist. Really? And one of the things he wrote in this essay was people should really just walk in the woods and think about what's happening under your feet. If you see a tree that has fallen and the roots are exposed, go look at that and look what's going on in the dirt. That's like a window down there when those trees fall. Oh my gosh. And he had the most poetic way of saying this. He said it is the root domain of lively darkness and silence. Oh. So good. that is where I got the title root domain. Oh, I mean it is truly magnificent. Just gorgeous. You should be so tickled with it. So it's, it's been in many shows, yeah. it's been in a few books, and to my great luck, a Hollywood set designer oh. saw it in a book and ended up renting it for me. It was in a, it was in a Hollywood movie a few years ago. That's what I was going for, I realized. That is so fantastic. Where do you have it? Where is hanging in your house? It usually hangs in the stairway, so I see it coming and going. Okay. You would love it. You would love to keeping light off of it, and mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, no direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. It's and it's held up very well. It's not faded at all in all those no. years. And the black is unknown. So yeah. The black is however you care to interpret it. I can't go any further without asking you about your leaf necklace. Oh. And, and you wove yeah the chain. trees trees and leaves even go to the necklaces i make uh, so these are thread leaves uh, uh -huh. that i make beautiful and i recently learned how to knit wire so i i i'm one of those people that love shiny objects <laughs> i love shiny things so it all comes together yeah oh, it's really really beautiful very good gorgeous so more trees. More trees. Tell us about this. This is called Sun Dogs, and mm -hmm. I'm surprised not many people know that term actually, Sun Dogs. Mm -hmm. So a Sun Dog, if you're looking at the sky and the sun is in a certain position coming lower down and there are wispy clouds, mm -hmm. um, you might catch like little bright almost rainbows to either side of it. Mm -hmm. 22 degrees, I think, is the measurement. So, you know, like maybe this far from the sun to either side, it, like parentheses. Always 22 degrees? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's one of those mathematical things with ice crystals oh, in the my sky. Oh my goodness, my this. goodness. Again, and the majesty of the earth and globe. And so they, they are related to rainbows. So I wanted, I had a wonderful dog that we miss still. His name was Gold Dust, and he was a retired racing greyhound, <laughs> the sweetest dog. I remember so you. <laughs> I decided to make a quilt about my beloved oh. Gold Dust and put him up in the sun dogs. Yes. So you can maybe make out there are two greyhounds. Oh running on either side I have to look closely in I the see. in those sun dogs this is something called an angelina fiber uh -huh. which is sort of a like shredded mylar uh -huh. and you can iron it in a teflon paper so it doesn't stick to your iron and make it into a sheet it uh -huh. comes in colors uh -huh. so i have a little blend of gold and red here mm -hmm. and denser of it for the dog in the center of the sun. And I have pieced the sky and overlaid a sheer white fabric and machine stitched all over that and uh -huh. stitched trees. the treetops. So you know beautiful. you're kind of looking up but not very high. Beautiful, beautiful. I remember that dog. You remember that he dog? He was gorgeous. He was a pretty big yeah. guy. Yeah. And Onto this is my onto forty stories. My favorite. Uh, I had to be. It had to have an explanation 
because at first I was thinking of just lots of black lines and and I, I didn't even look at, at it hard enough to see the windows and of course then I uh, it, you explained it so do it again. Well it's interesting that you you picked out the lines because it was the geometry that oh, really interested me about I see, this. I see. And this is not my neighborhood this is uh, <laughs> from a photograph taken in Chicago of the side of a building, I assume an apartment building. So I got permission from the photographer to reproduce it in, in fabric because I knew I would be showing it and I wanted to make sure he okay. held the copyright, so I needed permission from him. Yes. The original was just the windows. So I figured out actually how to paper piece this mm -hmm. in strips with a little bit of applique where these overlaps mm -hmm. are. And the trees here are just suggestions, reflections in the windows. Sky up here with some yellowy clouds and the trees are reflected in the windows down here. So I had that done and I thought, well, it looked great as a photograph, but I don't feel like it's finished yet as a quilt. So I decided to put the windows in another window. Mm -hmm. So clever. And I had that and I thought, it's, it's just like, I don't get the depth or something, something's still not right. So I decided to put Absolutely. something on the windowsill. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have a glass vase and a dimensional rose, uh -huh. um, freely cut uh, leaves with machine stitching. And I credit my husband, Jonathan, for coming up with this idea to echo this rose here with the rose oh, over there. Isn't that smart? In uh -huh. its own little vase over uh -huh. there. So you can have a conversation. He gets he's helpful in all He's helpful ways. for me. Yes. Yeah. I find it very difficult to to be honest or be, you know, not not I can't think of the word. Sure, to yourself. To really judge my own work, to uh -huh. see it without with somebody else's eyes. I so see. he's another set of eyes. I for see. Me. Um, critique groups are wonderful. Yes. Also, yes. Just yes. you just ask somebody, what do you see when uh -huh. you look at this? Because uh -huh. uh -huh. I know what my intent was. Uh -huh. You have to find out from somebody else if you were successful in I what see. you were trying to achieve. I, 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 do you have critique groups? I yes, I have a critique group I've been in for some years. Uh -huh. And one of the things you have to do is really trust each other, uh -huh. that people don't get defensive. I, I have and feelings hurt or something like that. You need, yes. you need to be constructive. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it's it's really yeah. very helpful. Very good, very good. So tell us about your baby tree and your big tree and I um is it is it a beach? This is I believe a little beach, uh -huh. a beach sapling. So this is called broken beach. I see. What <laughs> was will be. Oh. And this is a true story okay. that happened in my own neighborhood. I had, I often take walks in those woods. I showed you in that Rhapsody quilt down that path along the stream. And uh -huh. I saw the sapling next to the path. Oh. And beaches in my part of the county are unusual. I see them a lot closer to um, Body, larger bodies of water, different mm -hmm. types of soils, but in my neighborhood they're very rare, so this really caught my eye. I see, I see. And through the years I would pull vines off of it just to make sure it would it would grow nicely. Yes. So one day after a storm I came walking through and <laughs> I saw the top half of a mature poplar oh, no. had fallen right next to it, scraping off all the branches on one side of it. Oh, 
yeah. breaking branches. This had been struck by lightning. Uh -huh. So this this poplar, um, it's like maybe, I would guess 75 feet uh -huh. tall. True. They're very, very large trees. Yes. And the whole top half of it just went boom next to it. And I felt like of all the trees, <laughs> It's are the gods telling me something that they're trying to destroy this tree that I love? And what I've tried to express with this quilt, you see the breaks of some of the branches. Uh -huh. the, uh -huh. This is whole. Uh -huh. The white stitching is like ghost lines. These are the branches that were Whoa. there. Oh. And it's still alive it's been a couple years now it sprouted more branches so it has come back oh my goodness. so it's it's did about you, resiliency you, resiliency did you put it back in the ground or was it still oh it was standing there? it was oh, it was standing it was just had gotten a beating from the yeah ground. it just I see. it just missed being oh. like ground zero <laughs> for this thing it could, it could have been totally smashed, but it just lost oh. about half of its branches. And the colors of your background. This this is very fun for me, and I feel for Cindy picking out the colors for her quilts too. How much fun it is to go to your stash, yes. pick out things you're going to you think are going to work, and narrow it down and audition fabrics and cut oh. them up and try them together. I see. So this this is. Um, maybe a little different for me to do this kind of peace background uh -huh. and there's there's a hint of blue sky uh -huh. up uh -huh. here but it's not the kind of cloudy sky that i often use yeah. i wanted you to feel you that see the light some light yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i wanted you to feel that you were in the forest uh -huh. with lots of trees around you so that's that's my love of trees and that's, I, that's how i love to do my quilting okay well let's have cindy and eileen together for a moment well i am charmed being here i had to get a cane and hold myself up because i was t swept away by the, <laughs> these stories and the beautiful work that is expressed here it's an emotional story, uh, each one of them. And um, I, I can't, I come to this late as far as, as, far as the art quilts go. And um, I, I have to think in terms of it being expressionary. I, the the ex, um, expression uh, artists First, we had the photographs and the old masters, and then uh, expression. Am I saying abstract. it? Abstract. Well, then we went to abstract from there. there. They are expressionists. You have a, captured uh, both schools as far as the abstract and the in impressionist. It's, it's so grand. Um, I hope the, the viewers will enjoy it as much as, as uh, we have. Um, and I thank Eileen and Cindy so much. And, and you can uh, look for them um, here. We're open until the end of the month with their, with their uh, presentation. And um, thank you for 